Welcome travelers to my No Man's Sky Freighter Tips Guide. In this video, I'm gonna tell you absolutely everything you need to know about freighters and No Man's Sky. All right, so the big question is, well, how the heck do I get myself a freighter, am I right? In order for a freighter to spawn in No Man's Sky, you have to be playing for at least three hours. After that, you have to make at least five warp jumps. The very next time you make a warp jump, chances are you are going to spawn a freighter encounter. And if you fight that and win it, you can go and get that freighter. Now the thing is, travelers, if you decide to skip the very first freighter in No Man's Sky, you can actually get a capital ship like mine here. It's an S-Class freighter, and you can get that for free. I didn't pay a single buck. I got this one absolutely free of charge. This freighter is really nice. It's got 34 slots with 9 technology and of course it's blue and yellow and as you can imagine I have a blue and yellow fetish so yeah, works out great for me. Alright, so you get your very first free freighter. What are you going to do with it? So the very first thing you want to do is you want to run over here and talk to your captain. This is the fella you're going to have to talk to. He's at the very front of the ship. You're going to need to talk to him to claim your freighter in the very first place and once you do He's going to come over and send you over to this guy right here. You're going to talk to your navigator. And then your navigator is going to instruct you to make a command center. And that actually, I'll show you, it's right over here. I actually have four command centers because I plan on having a really huge frigate fleet. And one is not just going to cut it. So I'm going to need a whole bunch more. So I made four of them. And once you make your command center, you'll be able to make uh, freighter fuel or warp fuel for your actual frigates because you can't send them out on missions unless you have the warp fuel. So that's how you get the blueprint there. Once you create the uh, command centers, you'll be able to do a little mini quest and it'll get you the blueprint to make the fuel. And then once you start buying freighters, you can send them out and they'll do a bunch of missions and they can take forever, everybody, up to like an entire day. Um, before they come back and they'll have loot for you. But yeah, it is most definitely uh, worth it and they will level up as you go. You can buy yourself little crappy frigates and they'll eventually level up to an S-Class and be super awesome. All right, so let's hop down into here. Now, the very first thing you're going to notice when you hop into your freighter, this is where all the ships that you own um, will be stashed in. And currently, this is a very, very new save. Uh, this is my how to have the very best start and no man's sky save so it's very new I, I have less than 12 hours on this right now so i only own one ship but the very max number of ships you can own and store in your freighter is going to be six so keep that in mind hopefully there will be an update in the future and they'll actually up those rookie numbers because honestly six ships and uh that's not enough for me even though I'm on a new save, like I haven't started buying ships and it's because I'm like, don't want to get ship capped really fast. So I haven't put much time into it. But once I do, I, I get my six ships really fast. When you come up the stairs up here, there's going to be a little back room. I've already deleted it. If you want to see that part of it, go check out my how to have the very best start in No Man's Sky uh, video. And you'll see that there is a room in the very back of your freighter. Most travelers forget that if you delete this room way back here uh, and all the stuff that's in it, you will get thousands and thousands of uh, silver and tritium and you're going to get gold and all kinds of crap and it helps you build your freighter. So you actually kind of get a leg up if you destroy this room back here, you can actually get quite a bit of materials to build your base. And I always end up destroying that room and just making it the way I want anyway. But yeah, I've converted this thing into a mobile farm base, and I didn't even farm a single plant to do it. Um, I created all these plants just from uh, using my refineries. But yeah, and if you're on PC, you can actually have a terminus on your, on your freighter. Unfortunately, you do not want to portal back, or you will float in space and die. So don't portal back. If you are on PC, you can actually leave from here. Unfortunately, consoles are screwed. They're not able to do that. But PCs can do that, so that's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, the very first thing you want to do, uh, once you get your freighter, I recommend is destroy that back room. Uh, create your little uh, command centers right there. Get that going. Uh, build yourself a space terminal because it really does help buying like microprocessors and things like that so you don't have to create them yourself uh, to build all of the machines like my my giant large refiners. I have refiners ringing this entire complex, so I, I am never ever going to run out of re refiner space. 
Um, I don't have to build such a massive farm. Even though this one's huge, there's no need for it because I have so many refiners. Before I head out and snag up some frigates for my freighter fleet, let me show you what these consoles do here in the command center. All right, this frigate research terminal, this is how you can upgrade parts of your uh, freighter in No Man's Sky, your jump range and all that kind of stuff. The matter beam is really awesome. Uh, all this other stuff helps your frigates right here. All right, so you can get these uh, salvage frigate modules by just beating up on all the other NPC freighters and their little kind of convoys that come along with them. That's how you'll get the uh, salvage frigate modules and then you can use those to upgrade your freighter. All right, so this other one over here is how you manage your fleet. And unfortunately, my fleet is pretty ridiculous. I only have one, <laughs> so it's pretty lame. It's the one you start out with, just the little combat vessel. We need to go out and purchase more so I can send those out on a mission for y'all. And the last one is the freighter warp map. Now, the the freighter in No Man's Sky actually takes just regular warp fuel. It only takes one warp canister to fill up the, uh, the tanks all the way. And the really neat thing is, is you can jump to any star color. It can be a blue one. It can be a green one. It can be a red one. And of course, it can be any of the yellow ones, which are common. But you can warp to any one of those in your No Man's Sky freighter. You don't have to worry about uh, having your drives upgraded or anything like that like you do on your ships. These guys just do it naturally for you. So that's pretty neat. Finding yourselves frigates are really super easy in No Man's Sky. Just warp to any star system and you'll see them. They generally warp right in right after you just do kind of like fast travel. Hop up to the ones that are marked like this. Alright, and then just open up communications oh don't run into them all right so yeah you start talking with them i just don't even care how awesome or bad you are i'm just going to get you for demonstration purposes anyway besides you'll upgrade anyways all right that is a classy kind of lame we'll still take it anyway just because all right so let's hop over here and hopefully there's going to be a few more of them for sale yep there's one over there so we'll snag this one up. I'm only going to grab probably four or five of them. Oh my goodness. I'll probably grab four or five. Then we'll send them out on a mission. And then we'll wrap up this awesome No Man's Sky Freighter video. Alright. What are you going to be? Are you going to be any good? Of course you're not. You are a lame ship. Alright. Well, we'll take it anyway because they level up. Now, generally, there's only going to be a few of these frigates stationed in each one of these systems. So if you just want to hop from system to system, generally, I'm so greedy that I just hold out and just buy a whole bunch of S classes. But that does take a little bit of time, travelers. All right, let's see what we got here this time. Blah, blah, blah. Give me your stuff. Gra, gra. Yeah, I'm one of your people. It's too bad your ship's horrible. All right, I'm going to buy one more ship, and then we will send them on some missions. Generally, when you're picking frigates, you will definitely want to have a well-balanced fleet, which means you don't want to have just a whole bunch of one type of ship. You want to have multiples of each type of frigate. And it really does help balance your missions out better and make you more money for your freighter. All right, another crappy C-Class. All right, let's check out what type of ships we got. Oh, that ain't it. There we go. All right, I wasn't paying attention, so I ended up getting two combat ships, a support, and an exploration. That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby. All right, let's see what type of expeditions uh, we can go after. And generally, you're going to want to have one star rating higher than the difficulty of the mission. And seeing as how I have got a whole bunch of horrible ships, I'm probably not going to be able to get to three stars. Um, I don't really care how long it takes. Uh, yeah, let's just go on a patrol mission. Um, I've got a whole bunch of fighters anyway. So, yeah, let's do that. So, you are definitely going. You are definitely going. You are definitely going. Uh, you're all going. And it doesn't look like I made any launch thruster fuel for my frigates, so I'm going to have to do that, and then we will launch them off. There we go, made boat tons of it. Now I won't have to worry about that anymore. So let's go back over here and assign this mission.
All right, so I wanted to do a combat patrol so I can pimp out my little combat ships. Just send all you guys. Get the hell out of here. Make me a whole bunch of money. All right, and as you noticed, I have three stars on that. The difficulty is two. Uh, if you try to run a mission as the same difficulty or you have one star less, there's a very good chance that your frigate fleet's going to get beat down. And they'll come back all damaged. Then you'll have to fool with repairing them. So yeah, always send out your missions. Uh, make sure that you have more stars in it than the mission requires. And you won't have to worry about your frigates getting damaged. And it's a whole bunch of drama fixing them. Trust me. All right, travelers, bonus footage time. I'm going to show you how you can get an awesome freighter base exactly like this from scratch. Starting from ground zero. Let's start building this base. Here's that room in the very back of the freighter I was talking about, travelers. We are going to destroy it and everything in it, get all the materials back so we can start building our actual freighter base. Every single time I purchase a freighter in No Man's Sky, this is my ritual. After I talk to the captain, I come back here and I destroy absolutely everything that I can possibly destroy. You would be surprised just how many materials you can get back from doing this trick. And heck, you could turn around and sell them or just use them to build your freighter base. So it's like a win-win. And when you get your No Man's Sky freighter base complete, you can take that thing anywhere and you are prepared for any situation. The interior of this freighter is pretty shrunk down now. Now let's go ahead and expand to the proper size that I'm wanting for my base build. Once I get a gigantic room to about the size I want, then I'm going to ring the whole outer edge of this thing in large refineries. Once we get the large refineries set in place, I'll coat the outer walls with planters so I have a really, really good carbon source. Once I get all the standing planters pretty much set into place, I'll start putting out all those giant hydroponic trays so we can start getting plants in here. I'll also show you a neat little trick on getting those standing planters to work without electricity. Before we get into that, I might as well throw down these fleet command centers. My daggone freighter quest is like totally begging me to do it, so I might as well just get that out of the way. And instead of throwing one down, I might as well just make room for four. I'll be snagging up a whole bunch of frigates after this awesome beginner's guide is filmed, so I might as well just get all this stuff set into place anyway. Once you complete this fleet command center quest line, you'll get the ability to create the fuel needed to fuel your frigates. It's also a great way to make tons upon tons of money early on when you're starting out as a noob. Just create and sell those frigate fuels by the boat ton and you'll be rich, although flipping cobalt is much more profitable. I just purchased a whole boat ton of microprocessors from the space terminal I created on my freighter. Now it's time to throw down all these large refineries so I can have them ring my entire farm. By having access to so many large refineries like this, I'm not going to have to build such a massive farm in order to make all kinds of items. Refineries are all pretty much set into place and I have started working on the hydroponics setup. I think I'm going to start doing the standing planners now. Generally, if I do the hydroponics first, I screw up the placement of everything. I always end up not giving myself enough room around the edges and it's also going to be the case in this situation so I will have to move those hydroponic trays later but for now I'm going to get all these daggone planters going. I can already tell I don't really have enough room. What you need is enough space between the standing planters and the hydroponic trays because I'm going to be glitching a little light in there and it takes up space as well. So yeah, I don't, I don't really have enough room here, travelers, so I'm just going to run back and reload my manual save. That's going to put me right back at the spot I was before placing all those hydroponic trays. This little glitch I'm going to show you works on all platforms. What you do is you actually kind of connect the sockets together of the planner and the light right there, and it'll actually charge that planner. It takes a little practice to kind of get this right, but once you get it right, you'll be able to do it pretty much each and every single time you try to place one of these lights on the planners. The other really neat thing is this trick actually works with portals as well, so if you want to build a portal on your freighter, you can charge it from that light bulb. Finally have the placement right on these hydroponic trays. I think I'm going to pop one of them out so I can have a row down the middle, but yep, there's plenty of space. That's going to be perfect. There is a bug out there that plagues these hydroponic trays. You'll notice that some of them are red and some of them are blue. I'm going to show you how to keep them all blue right now. All you have to do is connect your light to one of those hydroponic trays and then daisy chain down the line. I'll show you that in just a second. And if you want to hide those daggone wires so you don't see them anymore, just purchase that right there from the Space Anomaly and it'll hide all your wires. 
Now all that's left to do is to daisy chain them all together from that light and this will make sure that you don't experience that bug where some of your planners run out of power. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but this will save you in the long run. This is actually pretty sweet. Base is really coming together at this point. I pretty much have all the planners set in place, all my standing planners are set in place, and my large refineries are set in place. Now it's time to create plant materials so we can actually make a farm. Pause the video here if you need to. These are the elements you need to create all the plant fiber. I didn't show Mordite, but it takes condensed carbon and dihydrogen. In the beginning, you'll be infusing oxygen with the main mineral that is needed to create the plants. For the first example, we will be creating gamma root, which needs oxygen and uranium. Once you get enough gamma root on hand, you can then infuse that gamma root with more uranium to make even more gamma root. I'll be using the oxygen infused method to get my farms up and going, but once they are in place, I'll definitely be using the other method, which infuses the plant fiber with its native element. Creating your farm base like this, Travelers, really helps you get to the end game quick, and when you want to make a bunch of circuit boards, well, you can make those and you never have to stop making those. Not having to wait for your plants to fully mature is really awesome, Travelers, so use this method as much as you can. It is a huge time saver. All the minerals you're going to need with the exception of carbon and condensed carbon can be purchased from the space station or the little ship guys on the space station. Up until I got my standing planters set into place, my main source of carbon was just turning oxygen into carbon in refineries. There you have it travelers, this is how I get my farms up and going really really quick and I don't have to worry about hunting and pecking around on planets for plant materials, I just create my own. These refineries are doing their job really well, I think I have a pretty good stash going of all these elements and I can start planting my farms anytime I want to. This should be plenty of material to start planting our farms, I'm just going to let our large refineries do their thing and get on with it. I planted a row of gut rot flowers, which is the stuff that gives you facium. It's basically the poop plants. Now let's get on to getting all these daggone frost crystals going. My plan is to do just one row of these guys, and I'm going to do two rows of pretty much every other plant. These plants here, like, they respawn really quick. It only takes like 15 to 30 minutes or something. I forget the actual time, but it's pretty fast. Now I'm going to start planting gamma weed, which is vital to making living glass. So I'm just going to stuff it right next to my frost warts. Just as a matter of convenience, so I don't have to run all over the place if I do happen to want to craft living glass at a later time. It's actually quite funny, because back in the day, I used to build farms that had thousands upon thousands of plants in them, just because I didn't really know about the refinery trick to actually create plant material. And I actually have to admit, this is almost overkill. Actually, it's not almost overkill. It pretty much is overkill. I don't need this many planters, but since I'm space greedy, I just do what I want anyway, I suppose. The thing is, travelers, you don't really need to build a gigantic overkill farm like I have going here. I have plenty of those large refineries, and whenever I want any plant material, I can just create it whenever I need it. The good news is, when I decide to build a super awesome mega base on some paradise planet somewhere, I am going to have a leg up when I go to make the farms in that base, since I have this one all set up on my freighter. <laughs> Talking about overkill, I'm going to have to expand a little bit more for my fungal molds. I am not able to plant as many as I want to because of the layout here. It's kind of cutting off at least eight planters, so yeah, that's not going to work out for me. In a little while, I'll show you my solution to being able to add a little bit more fungal mold in here. I had to add more diet plants, which I completely forgot about in the beginning, so yeah, I have to create a new room and add the more diet in the back. These last two plants I'm going to plant in the main room take forever to spawn travelers. This solar vine and the cactus can take almost up to a day. I think it's like 16 hours or something ridiculous like that. Since these daggone solar vine and cactuses take forever to respawn, it is your very best bet to use the oxygen infused method as well as mixing some of that solar vine with its main primary element which is phosphorus to create even more of the plant material. If you don't use the oxygen infused method or the other method I showed you, you are going to be strapped down by the man and you're going to have to wait for these things to respawn, which like I said, takes forever. Basically, the moral of the story is don't get strapped down by the man, have a whole bunch of large or medium refineries and you're going to be completely set. All you need to do is worry about finding oxygen, which is on every single space terminal and every single little ship guy that lands on the space station cells, so that's good to go. And then you need to worry about the plant's main element, and that's really about it, travelers. And you can create as much as you want, whenever you want. Just about finished planting all the plants I'm going to have in this main room. I'm going to have to build a little tiny room off in the back, and then I'm going to plant my Mordite. 
I guess it's a good idea to kind of build this little back room in the back of my freighter considering this is a whole bunch of rotten flesh plants. Even though I'm a Viking, I am not into smelling a whole bunch of rotten flesh. When I eat flesh, I want it to be bleeding and wiggling, travelers. Once I get this Mordite set into place, travelers, I will have all the plant material I need to create all the endgame items in No Man's Sky. There are a couple other plants that I could plant, but I'm not going to really worry about it because they're not really needed to construct those endgame items I was talking about. Alright, there we go. I've got all my plants set into place. I think I'm going to put a couple planters right here and stick some mushroom plants in it. Might as well. That's a great opportunity to make up for what I'm missing. I took a little break to let my plants spawn in the planters. Let's see what 10 hours and 57 minutes of gameplay looks like, travelers. We'll take a little base tour and check out what my freighter looks like now. And while we do that, we'll recap on all the steps needed to replicate this process. Now let's recap how you can get yourself a freighter in No Man's Sky. It is a very simple process, but it really does add quite a bit to your gameplay. First, you want to play the game for at least three hours and make five warp jumps. That'll give the game the ability to spawn the freighter encounter for you, and then you'll be able to get a freighter. I highly recommend that you pass up the very first freighter encounter so you can get a capital ship like this for free, instead of getting impatient and grabbing the other one for free, because it's really not worth it. After you do that, you want to talk to your captain in the back back there. He will direct you to build your command centers. You can then go get frigates, set them out on missions. It's really awesome then most definitely get on to building your mobile base farm. Get this thing underway. It is gonna be well worth it. Whenever you wanna put roots down on a planet, you are gonna be completely set and you're not gonna to have to go out and pick all these plants. They're all gonna be sitting there waiting for you since you're gonna know how to do it. This concludes part one of my No Man's Sky Freighter Base video. I hope this helps your gameplay. Make sure you stay tuned for part two. Part 2 will start off with our fleet getting back and us getting a whole bunch of loot. So basically, it's part 2. The quest for more space cheddar. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.